The importance of maritime transport for trade and development cannot be overemphasised. With over 80% of global trade by volume and more than 70% by value carried on ships, seaborne trade is an engine for inclusive and sustainable growth. Maritime transport is an essential part of the so-called blue economy. Analysts and commentators agree that this has enormous potential to promote economic growth and social inclusion and improve livelihoods, while at the same time ensuring the sustainability of the oceans and coastal areas. It's been identified as a vital element in enabling many of the UN Sustainable Development Goals to be realised. And yet many countries remain unprepared to take advantage of this potential. They lack the basic infrastructure at the national level to become effective stakeholders in the blue economy and make the most of the opportunities it offers. What they lack and what they need is a coherent and coordinated national maritime transport policy. So what exactly is a national maritime transport policy? National maritime transport policy is the articulation of more concrete guidelines and principles that will help a government or a nation to achieve its national maritime vision. It might, for example, cover maritime safety measures, pollution prevention and environmental protection, port management and expansion, state aid, competition rules governing access to national markets and how the National Maritime Administration operates. All those involved need to participate in drawing up the policy to ensure they understand it and they buy into it. I would say the first steps would be to identify a leading ministry or agency and then to prioritize the national goals and the national objectives and national maritime transport policy. This means a number of different government entities will need to be involved. Ministries for maritime affairs, transport, environment, finance, economic planning, fisheries and even defence are all likely to be involved. Foreign affairs and even education and labour could also have a seat at the table. And in most countries, the private sector and NGOs would ideally also be part of the conversation. It's a complex process, but where do you start? Once a lead agency has been nominated, the first step is to identify the country's national maritime interests and assess these in light of the existing social, economic and regulatory environment. Well, the first thing is to investigate, you know, what is the current status of your, your maritime activity and what are the uh, best practices and gaps that may, may have in a country's uh, transport sector. Uh, so you have to do kind of an underlying examination of, you know, where uh, the country is and where it would like to be in a limited time frame, five to ten years. Armed with the results of these preliminary exercises, a draft policy can then be drawn up, circulated for comment among the other stakeholders and, eventually, finalised. Most countries will then need to draft and enact legislation to give the policy teeth, and then begins a process of implementation, enforcement, monitoring and review. IMO is the UN agency responsible for international shipping and is fully committed to helping countries develop their national maritime transport policies. Many of the likely benefits are directly in line with IMO's own goals and objectives and will lead to better implementation of IMO conventions. Through its Integrated Technical Cooperation Programme, IMO organises activities to assist countries prepare their national maritime transport policies and, in conjunction with the World Maritime University, has developed a training package for government officials and other senior personnel. A well-structured and implemented national maritime transport policy can pave the way for modern and effective maritime governance, for timely application of new technology, for enhanced maritime safety and security, for better maritime education and training, and for improved environmental protection. Not only are each of these desirable outcomes in their own right, they are also the tools a country needs to become an effective participant in the maritime sector and to harness the full potential of the blue economy.